All right, so obviously I'm trying to get some work done and do a video, and today it was like, let me just test um, my tanks and whatever, and I found that one of them was 8.4, or excuse me, that's backwards, 4.8. That's right. It's definitely 4.8. Let me get the checker here and show you 4.8. Now, I'll retake this test for you guys a lot, or for the video's sake, um, so you guys can see it. People believe that corals can't be in lower DKH. It really just depends on a multitude of things, I feel, um, meaning that if it's done slowly uh, over time, then they adjust. Now, the problem is, is people see that, and automatically try to correct it and jump it all the way back up to eight or something like that. I do not recommend doing that. You will have problems if you try to uh, jump it like that. Just slowly bring it up. It's nothing to worry about. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not the only one that has uh, DKH that low. A good friend of mine, fan at Tyler Gardens, his has been even, I think, even lower than that, to be quite honest with acros, I, every kind of species of coral. So today's video is going to be on that. Now, let me flip the camera around. Let me show you what's going on. Are you listening? Damn. So as you guys can see, this is my aquarium here, my my huge, the beast, should I say. Everybody's doing great. Look at the powder blue here. He's doing great. Um, Hippo Tang's doing great. Powder blue's doing great. Purple, everybody's doing great, okay? Everybody's fine. Even this guy, people say, oh, feed him. I mean, his gut is huge. That's just him. I think he had some stress at you know when we tore down the other tank, and he actually quit eating for a while. I think he was just totally just depressed. So um, that's the OG. We calling him Mr. OG because he's been around. Him and the Purple Tang has been around, uh, and uh, the bigger Yellow Tang has been around the longest. So we're gonna. We're going to call him the OG, or the other yellow tang in there. So, Foxface's name is OG. People say, call him the OG. So, he is the OG. He officially has a name as the OG. This chalice is not going to do any justice uh, with the daylight uh, on, but you can see this thing is pretty awesome. So, yeah, we took him out of his own country and brought him here. Um, hopefully he grows out. We put him on a big uh, square disc because we got to grow him out. It's uh, me and Pat, Murphy's Aquatics. If you don't know Pat, uh, make sure you go over there and check out Murphy's Aquatics on YouTube. So, everything's looking great. Everything's doing great. Everybody's fine. All the corals are doing awesome. And I do apologize for not getting out videos uh, like I should right now, but I've obviously been traveling a lot and a lot's been going on. So therefore, I have been trying to do the live streams as much as possible, um, bring you guys that couldn't make it to the shows and stuff like that. Let you guys sit back and relax and just have fun and enjoy, uh, you know, the live streams. So, real quick, everything's doing great. All the fish, everybody's still alive. Everybody's doing great. As you see, um, nobody's picking on anybody. Not yet. I will be getting some more fish, and we're going to disrupt the system again. That's what's going to happen. So, over here, um, everything's dirty, um, as always, because I really don't pay a lot of attention over here. It's just holding corals and all that stuff. We have um, corals here as well. 
I cleaned out the JBJ. That's why there's a rag sitting up here. Um, I've been cleaning it out. This is what we're going to be putting together. Uh, does have filter sock holders, the whole nine yards. Two pumps as returns. Another filter sock holder. All that good stuff. So don't mind it. Um, we're going to be setting that up, I think, just with frag, um, frag racks. I was going to aquascape it with rock, but honestly, I think I'm going to just use frag racks. So we're going to be putting together some frag racks. I've been cutting some. This is going in to this. We're going to be cleaning this completely out. I'm going to be dumping the media here. I'm going to be retopping it off with some arms media and some uh well first i'm going to use right there that bag from brightwell so we're going to be using their media topping it off um cleaning the calcium reactor out i haven't watched the ph on it i don't know what it is the battery's dead don't mind the mess i want to organize get all this cleaned up i'm just i'm over it so i've been trying to work a little bit here at a time brian Another former YouTuber came over, helped me organize, move move everything off this wall, put that over there, tear down the old old uh, system that used to be sitting there to hold tanks and whatnot. So we can get this up and running. Here's my table. I'm going to organize it for my testing and all that. Everything's a mess. Everything's a mess. And I, I'm willing to share it with you. I, I really am. So we're going to get that in here. So, I know you guys might be wondering what that is. That's from Dr. Tim. This is uh, for um, beneficial bacteria. As far as I know, I don't know a whole lot yet about it. I put it in just to see if it's cleaning up the tank or helping out. I have seen some improvements um, just because I've been neglecting this. Not to be funny, neglecting, keeping my hands out, not really doing a whole lot with it. That leads me to why... This aquarium here is registering at 4.8 dKH. That median there, things, I, like I said, I, I've been letting it drip and doing its thing, but I have not kept up with it. And if you're wondering why, how things are still whatever, yeah, some things you can see being affected. Uh, meaning you can see some corals, you know, start to dull out or strip or whatever the case may be. Just a little bit. Not all, not all of them. Just here and there um, will start to fade a little bit or do something crazy. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's from DKH or is that just from something else. They touch something or whatever. But everything is doing great. There's corals that's been here from the very beginning and everything's looking good everything is doing great i can't really pinpoint it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to test this tank one more time for you guys so i'm going to put you on the tripod we're going to run through the test and see what it comes back to again now i just did it it said 4.8 dkh so now it's time to go ahead and do it again on camera just to see what it's going to say and all that good stuff look at that i know it's uh whatever but yeah everything's whatever i gotta get my tongs up out of there i dropped it so let's do that let me put you on a tripod and let's check all right everyone let's uh let's get a new valve in here to do a new test so we'll grab a, a new one what i like to do is just rinse it out rinse it out grab some more water Check out what I need. I like to eyeball it, take the cap, and make sure it's on the line. So we got a fresh bottle of tank water. We're going to go ahead and do the thing here. Now, I haven't touched this aquarium, honestly, since uh, I set it up, to be honest. We're going to stick that in there. We're going to turn it on. 
We're going to get our syringe ready. Get that to the mark we need. Hold that there. This says C1. We're going to push that there. Now you guys probably can't see it. Let me bring it in closer. It says C2. And we're going to add our solution. Just like yay. I like to make sure I get it all. So therefore, now what it says is five times, right? One, two, three, four, five, right? Stick that in there. I like to go the same way every time. Ten mils facing me. C2. Now we're going to hit that. And see what it says. Last one said 4.8. This is why I like Hannah, first off. And it says 4.7. Okay? 4.7. So, first one was 4.8. This is saying 4.7. Um, I love it. I love Hannah. I mean, I've done multiple tests like this. If you do your water line every, exact every time the exact same, and do what you're supposed to do and be very uh, anal about getting the same amount of solution and everything. You should end up close to the same number every time, if not the same number. That's just me. Uh, but yeah, so this aquarium been running God knows how long like this, to be honest with you. Uh, we have acros, we have everything in here. So now what I'm going to do today is be doing some cleaning and slowly letting the calcium reactor start to bring up things. I might dose a little bit, enough to just give me one DKH movement. Um, I don't know yet. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, corals are surviving. Corals are living. Corals are doing just great. It's not idea, obviously, because that's what they say. Uh, but at the same time, Dan has done this for many years. Um, his stuff is usually low as well. You know, and uh, yeah. I mean, even with a lot of color and everything else. So, once again, don't always believe what you hear. Believe all of what your eyes tell you. Um, can coral survive in lower DKH? Obviously, the answer is yes. So, real quick. Let me take you off the tripod. Like I said, um, we have... You know, corals that are doing great in there. We have anything from zoas to the sponge to acans, stuff like that. You know, tons and tons and tons of stuff. And they all seem to be doing great. Well, with that being said, I'm going to get back to work. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know some of you are probably scratching your head out there like, how is that possible and all that? Nothing surprises me in this hobby. Um, I've known, you know, of Dan's stuff being very low for a long time. Um, and his corals still grow. His corals still do, all, you know, things that, as if it would have been in a tank that was running 8.4, 8.5, 9.0 um, DKH. So... It is what it is. I was just like, you know what? I think this will be a great video just to put out, to show people. But today, I'm going to try to at least get one side of the frag rack system. I got tons of frags to frag, tons of things to glue up. And, you know, just try to organize it more. And because um, it is a holding tank, that's all it is used for. And we're going to just do that and see you know, if I can just get more organized and clean it up. Um, I got that that aquarium over there rocking and rolling. That's hard. The hardest thing about having multiple tank is you tend to neglect the other ones. You have one that's your favorite, and you tend to neglect the rest of them. I wouldn't advise having multiple tanks. In my opinion, 
it can be overwhelming and you could start neglecting uh, neglect start neglecting the animals to be quite honest so um, you can always give it a shot see how it does if you feel like it's overwhelming and stuff I, I I would advise that you just stick to one so you can concentrate and learn um, you know from the one you have and what you can get away with what you can't you know and just better yourself as far as education wise and stuff like that because you'll have more time focus on your primary aquarium than you would multiple aquariums so with that being said hopefully you guys have a blessed day um, and I'll see you guys real soon don't forget to hit that comment uh, the comment section if you have any comments don't forget to hit the notification bell for any future updates and please make sure you like comment and share my videos and with that being said peace